<laughs> All right, hello everyone. So I'm gonna make this quick improv type of video to help everybody out. A video is the easiest way for me to do this, I think, rather than type something up. And a lot of people, a lot of people have been confused about this lab. So I'm gonna do my best here. I didn't practice anything, so I'm just gonna go with it and see what I can remember from this lab. So, all right, I'm gonna go off of the Excel sheet and go through the steps and also along the way explain what that part of the lab was about so you can you know use that for your lab reports. So, okay, the first part is we have this galvanometer instrument that measures things up to 500 microamps. Uh, before we can get to use it, we wanna know its internal resistance because that's gonna be important later on. So, okay, we're gonna start, uh, one second. All right, so we're going to start. This was the first part of the lab. Um, the circuit was something like this here. I'm going to draw a special thing. I'm going to call this G. And let's say this is RG. This is RD. I don't remember if these were the, act, the designators for those resistors during the lab, but anyways, the idea was we had a 2 volt power supply. Okay, so the power supply was set to 2 volts. And then we had the decade box, that's this RD over here. And then we had the galvanometer, okay? And that's what the, the thing that circled, the resistor circled there. So these things were in series, okay? That means for one thing, the same current is running through everything. Okay, so just a quick reminder, uh, when things are in series, things in series have the same current. Things in series have the same current. These things are all in series, okay? So if the galvanometer is measuring 500 microamps, that's me, that means 500 microamps is running through it, running through the power supply, running through RD. Okay. Anyways, that's just something to note. All right. Um, the other thing is when things are in series like this, or in this particular case, they all form one loop, the voltages of everything has to add up um, uh, to zero, let's say. Okay. So as in the two volts of the power supply, has to be equal to the voltage drop across this resistor and the voltage drop across here, okay? That's another thing to remember when things go in a loop, all right? Anyways, that's not relevant for this part, but it does come in handy later on. I just wanted to, people to be reminded of that. So that was what last week's lab was for, applying KVL, KCL, and Ohm's law, okay? Unfortunately, you guys haven't had enough practice with this in the lecture yet, and so this is probably why there's a lot of confusion, but just something important to know. These are the prerequisites before you understand how to do this lab properly. In any case, all right, so what we had this setup for this lab uh, was we were varying this RD until the galvanometer was showing 500 microamps. As in to say, the current running through it was 500 microamps, which also means the current through everything is 500 microamps, okay? And if we know 500 microamps is running through it, we take um, our multimeter and put it in parallel with it to measure the voltage across it, okay? And what the video showed, as well as what's in over here, this, this V full scale value, okay, that was 0 0.061 volts or 61 millivolts, okay? That's what we're showing. So when there was 500 microamps running through, uh, the galvanometer, it had a voltage drop of 0 0.06 watt, 0 0.061 volts, okay? So that's easy. To calculate the internal resistance, we just use Ohm's law. Remember, Ohm's law is V equals IR. And in this case, I'm just going to write G to designate this was through the galvanometer. Sorry, this pen is not working as, as much as I'd like. Anyways, we have RG, then is equal to VG, over IG, oh my, this, this pen is great, it's working with me. <laughs> okay, and then you just put those in, and you'll get something around 15 ohms, okay? By the way, I should say this 15 ohms is actually low compared to what I did in the lab. In the lab, I measured 120 ohms, but anyways, so you get 15 ohms, and that's the internal resistance of the galvanometer, all right? So this first part was a simple application of Ohm's law. Some people were asking, how do I get the current? All I'm given is this voltage here. Well, that full scale, this full scale, V full scale, full scale means the galvanometer was showing maximum current. And the galvanometer measures current, measures 500 microamps in this case. All right, so that was part one. Okay. 
Part two now we're trying to, we're trying to use the uh, galvanometer to make a voltmeter, okay? And we need to figure out um, uh, how to set up some decade box resistor with it so that we can measure some voltages, okay? Now here's something. This is not in the lab. Here's something to help you guys understand how you make a voltmeter in general and how this applies to this lab. Whenever, let's say this is a resistor, okay, and it's connected to some circuit. I don't know what this is. I'm just going to call this R. You want to measure the voltage across it. Okay. Um, we've been putting multimeters in parallel, right? We Last week, we had a multimeter in parallel with things in order to measure their voltage. Okay, why do we do that? Why do we put it in parallel? One sec. Okay, why do we put this multimeter in parallel? Okay, so let's say here we're measuring the voltage here. This is how I designate voltage, by the way, put a plus and minus uh, to indicate kind of the polarity of the voltage. In any case, why do I put things in parallel? Because things in parallel, huge point, things, I'm so sorry, this pen is not writing well at all. Things in parallel have the same voltage okay hopefully your brains can fill in there or just listen to what i said things in parallel have the same voltage so your multimeter here is also going to have that voltage drop v across it just like just like this so if you know the voltage drop across your multimeter you also know the voltage drop across whatever you're trying to measure so that's why you put things in parallel okay Here's the thing though, you gotta be careful. If you put something in parallel, then it starts to draw a current. So this is the other point. Things put in parallel will draw current. Okay, that's important. This is not mentioned in the lab manual or in the video. But it's very important to know because let's say through this resistor, let's just give, I'm going to write down an example here. Let's say that this resistor was one ohms and let's say there was one amp running through it. Ohms law will tell you that's one volt across the resistor. Okay, you want to make sure that it's one volt. So you take your multimeter and you put it across. But your multimeter, if it's not designed properly, it might take some of its own current, right? The current running through here that used to be running just through the resistor is now split between the resistor and your multimeter. Okay, that's KCL. The current coming in must equal to the current coming out. So before there was one amp coming in here, one amp, and that all of it was going through the resistor R, but now some of that one amp is going through your multimeter. So the current through R has gone down. What do we know? If current has gone down, remember V equals IR, if this has gone down and this has stayed the same, then this also went down. So by putting your multimeter in parallel, you have now decreased the voltage that was there before your multimeter was put. And that's not good. An instrument that's supposed to give you a measurement is not supposed to affect what it's measuring. So that's an important consideration. We can't have the voltmeter put in parallel affecting the voltage we're trying to measure. So how can we make sure how can we make sure that the voltmeter is not affecting this resistor R? Okay, that's the question mark here. That's how you, that's the fundamental question when designing any voltmeter. Well, how can you make sure there's almost, what did we say the problem was? That you that you the thing you put in parallel starts to draw current? Well, if it's really high resistance, it's not going to draw much current, right? If this R is really high and you have the same V that's across your load there, then the current is going to be really small. And so it's going to have a minimal effect on the circuit if its resistance is really high. In fact, if the resistance was infinity, then we'd have zero effect. We'd have a perfect voltmeter. Okay? So that's that's the ideal case. We want to get to infinity. But wait, there's a problem. What do we have to build this? And I'm going to go get to that in a second. But if you have infinite resistance, that means that 
your current is zero. The current that's coming through is going to be zero. Okay, now another way you can think of it is I equals V over R. If this is infinity, this whole thing is zero. Okay, so if you have infinite resistance, the current is zero. Can your measurement instrument handle that? Can it measure something without any current running through it? Well, for our particular case, no, that's not going to work. And let's see why. What did we have in the lab? So again, I'm going to draw that resistor I was trying to measure. This is just an example resistor. We're going to put our thing in parallel. What did we have set up in the lab? We had a decade box and then our galvanometer. Okay, so this is our galvanometer. This is our decade box. And this is our thing that we're trying to measure, whatever it is. This could also be a power supply, by the way. It doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be a resistor, okay? any case. So um, over here, from the first part, we got that this was 15 ohms. Okay. And this, we don't know yet. We don't know what to set this at. Let's set this as. And in this R, who knows what it could be, what its, what its resistance is. Okay. But I'll tell you something. If this R was close to this 15 ohms and we had no, no decade box, then our multimeter would absolutely not work. We would show nothing. Uh, so we want to get this combination as close as possible to our ideal infinity so that it has minimal effect on the circuit um, and, and, and so it doesn't affect the voltage you're trying to measure. But if we have R as infinity, then our current goes to zero. But what are we using to measure the voltage? We're taking the current of the galvanometer and multiplying it by some factor and that's what we're getting the voltage for. Okay, hopefully that's what you guys have kind of gathered from the lab so far. So we can't have the current be zero. We need there to be some current to go through. Okay. Uh, and so that's our other constraint. We want to get to infinity, but we can't because we'll have the current go to zero. So we have another constraint, which is that uh, we need to make sure there's enough current. Our galvanometer goes up to 500 microamps. So we want to go from zero to 500 microamps to represent some voltage range. Based on the lab, we want at 10 volts, 500 microamps through this 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 um, uh, makeshift voltmeter we have. So whenever there's 500 microamps running through, that corresponds to 10 volts overall here. Okay. When V is 10 volts, we want 500 microamps. So you can just use you can use KVL, you can use Ohm's law, what have you. Uh, I mean, you can use whatever. But based on this calculation, we calculate what that RD should be. So I'm going to use KVL. Okay, and using KVL, I'll know that 10 volts should equal to I. I think in the lab report or the lab manual was IA. I'm just going to say I. Okay, this, the current running through here, I'm just going to call that I. I times RD plus I. Goodness, I times RG. That should be my 10 volts. My I here. And I'm trying to, okay, and I'm trying to solve for this. So let's go 10 minus RG minus, uh, oh dear, okay, one second, let me think about that for a second, I, okay, 10 over I equals RD plus RG, and so RD equals to 10, I'm sorry this handwriting is terrible, like I said, in practice, I'm just trying to help you guys out real quick, okay? And so there, that's our decade box. That's what it needs to be. Okay, we, we know this. That's 15 ohms. We know this. This is 500 microamps. As in, that's what, at 10 volts, we want 500 microamps. And we're trying to solve what RD should be in order to satisfy this condition. Okay? And then this will give you some value. All right? And there we go. And once you have this, you have now constructed your voltmeter successfully. Okay, there is another way to look at this. You could have looked at this through voltage division. But I'll not get into that. So this is one way you could have looked at this part of the lab. Okay. So, uh, yep. All right. Let me see what was on the Excel sheet to see what you guys had to fill in. So, all right. The multimeter was, um, was you know, constructed. You calculated what RD is. So this part over here, that's what makes up your multimeter now. It's a, the decade box in series with your galvanometer. And then, okay, we put it across a battery power supply. Uh, of, of, in our power supply, battery one and battery two, and we saw what the galvanometer current was. Okay, 
So remember now, at 500 microamps, that corresponded to 10 volts. Okay, you can quickly do that in your head. That's a multiplication by. Uh, let me just think about this for a second. That's two times a thousand. I think that's 20,000. I think you multiply that by 20,000. So multiply the galvanometer current by 20,000, and that should get you what the actual voltage is. So if it was 500 microamps, that multiplied by 20,000 gives you 10 volts. Well, over here, this is 100 microamps when we connected it across the power supply and was that. That should give us uh, 100 microamps times 20,000. That should actually give us 2 volts. So this 1.993, you know, is approximately is what the multimeter told us accurately, or I should say the digital multimeter told us. The galvanometer, our voltmeter, tells us it's 2 volts. So whatever, you can write either one down. Uh, there isn't a separate column, I don't know why, there should be, but based on your voltmeter setup, this times 20,000 should give you the voltage that your multimeter is telling you. These values here, that's the digital multimeter, what it's saying, okay? All right, and then likewise, 180 times 20,000 gives you something, and so on, okay? So anyways, so that's kind of that part of the lab. Okay, let's move on. Okay, sorry, make a plot. Yeah, this is just a scatter plot. You guys have done this for the last lab. Uh, by the way, if you're making a scatter plot, it's easy. Yeah, you know, you just put your points in two columns and then insert. And then there's here, and this, you can see this part here, that's a scatter plot. These two, these dots, you just put that in and then you can play around with it. You can figure out how to make a best fit line and show you an equation and all that, okay? All right, and then it asks over here, for a higher accuracy, should the resistance of the decade box be large or small? Why? Okay, so here's the thing. This question is kind of misleading um, in the sense that it doesn't tell you, you know, it doesn't tell you the constraints. What did we say? So we talked about how when you're making a voltmeter, it draws current, right? This, it draws current here. When you put something in parallel, it will draw current. That reduces the voltage here okay even though both of these have the same voltage but you put in parallel you change the you change the circuit and so now the original circuit is a little bit affected so ideally we'd have this this voltmeter's resistance be infinite okay ideally this combination here would be infinite the problem is we can't measure zero current and conclude some voltage from that so we got to work with the this galvanometer and have it be you know, zero to 500 microamps. And and that get, that gives us the best range of values that we can measure. So with this setup, we can measure zero to 10 volts uh, pretty decently. One second. Zero to 10 volts pretty decently with uh, the galvanometer reading going from zero to 100, 500 microamps, okay? So in a way, you can think about this as giving us the best range of values to measure or best resolution, okay? Um, if this RT was higher than whatever we calculated from this, then we would not get the full range. Or at 10 volts, it might instead be 400 microamps if this RT was higher. And so um, we're having less, an effect, less of an effect on the circuit now. Our overall resistance is closer to this infinity idea, ideal, but we're not able to measure in as tiny increments as we used to be we're now going from zero to 400 microamps, for example, or less than that. And that may be harder for you to read. So this gives us best resolution, we can say. Okay, Re resolution is, a, is how, how much, uh, how tiny of an increment of voltage we can measure. Okay, for example, a one volt difference here corresponds to um, uh, 50 microamps. But if our range went from 0 to 400, a 1 volt increment is 40 microamps, so it's smaller. Okay, that's so best resolution is from this over here. However, this is the ideal. This has the least effect. Least effect. So there are two constraints you're working with here that are counter to each other. This one gives us better resolution. This one has less of an effect on the circuit. Okay, so that's what I would mention. That's what I would answer to the question. Neither of these is necessarily better than the other. This all depends on what you're trying to build. And this is more of an electrical engineer's problem. So I think this would be enough for you guys to answer. Okay, as long as you're able to recognize these two effects, 
then you should be good to go. All right, so that's that, that's that question. Okay, in the last part, you're measuring an ammeter. Or sorry, you're making your galvanometer into an ammeter. Now this was by far the most confusing part for everybody, and I can understand why. I have no idea why we decided, whoever, you know, uh, put this lab together, decided to do this. Whereas for the previous part, we didn't have this kind of plot. I mean, it's not necessarily, you know, confusing. It's just extra, and it kind of takes away from the idea of, of how we were going about the lab so far. This is, you know, a bit of a change from that. So I don't like this part very well, but the idea is, is still there. You know, we're, we're trying to make our galvanometer into an ammeter now. Okay, so some of you might be wondering, uh, so what's an ammeter? An ammeter, okay, I'm going to represent it with this symbol. It measures current, for God's sake. It measures current. Okay. But wait, our galvanometer here, okay, with the resistor through it, it also measures current. So why are we why are we having a whole separate lab part devoted to this? Well, because our galvanometer goes only up to 500 microamps. And for this part of the lab, we wanna we want it to be able to go up to 100 milliamps. That's over uh, 200, 200, or yes, I think 200 times as much, or 2,000 maybe, one of the two. I can't remember, like I said, I didn't practice before this, but somewhere around that range. So we wanted to be able to measure orders of magnitude more current. So what does that mean then? Then we need to have it somehow set up so that we can allow it to only take up to what it is rated at for this 500 microamps, then we need to have somehow a way to bypass the rest of this 100 milliamps we're trying to measure um, and, and have all this together a, a, be an effective ammeter. So before we were measuring voltage by putting something in parallel, right? And in this volt, voltmeter of ours, we had two resistors. This was the decade and this was your galvanometer. Okay, this is what we had. So this is when we're measuring voltage we put something in parallel, like I said, things in parallel have the same voltage. Remember earlier in the lab, I pointed out things, ah, oh, that was not there. I think I wrote it down here and I raised it, but I said that things in series have the same current. Well, yeah, now that's what we're going to do. We have our thing that we're trying to measure the current through, and that's where we put our ammeter. We put our ammeter in series. Okay, so we're not putting it in parallel anymore. All right, so now let's, let's explore this ammeter that we want to make a little more. In a similar way as we were doing the voltmeter, we had certain constraints and an ideal that we were trying to get to. Okay, when you're having an ammeter, you want to you want to make sure you're not affecting the current you're trying to measure. Okay, so here's the problem: if you put your galvanometer in, not only does it only measure up to 500 microamps, but it's got a resistance of 15 ohms. Okay, that that means that when you put it in the circuit, you're adding resistance in. And that uh, will definitely affect the resistance, uh, the, the current running through the circuit. And so your your instrument is is uh, is a bad one. Okay, like I said, ideal cases we don't want our instrument to affect our circuit. We want to measure without changing anything. Okay, so how are we going to solve this problem? So we if, and just to give it a quick example, if this is our galvanometer here, and this was a one ohm resistor, let's say this is one volts. This this is our circuit here. Without the galvanometer in play, one volt across one ohm, that gives us one amp. However, once you put your galvanometer in series, guess what? Now you have 16 ohms in the circuit, you have one over 16 amps. Let's say that's like 5 milliamps. So from one amp to 5 milliamps, that's an order reduction of 200 by putting your galvanometer in there. That's terrible. Okay, so we can't have that. So what we want to do is kind of a couple things. Reduce the effective resistance R, RG. Before, for the voltmeter, we were trying to increase it, right? We were trying to get our R to be infinity. Here, we're trying to do the opposite. We want it to be really low. Really low resistance. Okay? So, what's one way that you can reduce this re the resistance of something? That's what last, what last week's lab should have kind of hinted at to you. Because when you have a resistor, and then you put another resistor in parallel to it, overall, both of these, the equivalent resistance is going to be something less, which is which is something that I think surprised some of you, and some of you were emailing me. For example, if this was 1 ohm, this is 1 ohm, the equivalent resistance is not 2 ohms, 
Okay, it's not 2 ohms. It's actually 0.5 ohms. Okay, and that has to do with the way we, uh, the formula for things in parallel goes like this. Okay, 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus so on. Okay, please remember this formula. So many people have been asking me questions and really it was just, you know, look at this formula and your, your questions will be answered. A lot of people had confusion from this and there was no good reason for it. Um, this was given in the lab menu for lab 3 and I also have emailed it myself, this formula, many times. So please, you know, this is key to a lot of the questions here. Okay, in any case, all right. So we have our galvanometer, we want to reduce its effective resistance so that it does not affect the circuit. Right now it's 15 ohms, that's a mighty 15 ohms. And in fact, in the lab, it was 120 ohms for me. So that's huge, that's terrible. We want to reduce that down to way less, something like 1 ohm or less. Okay, and in fact, that's what we're going to design towards. We're given the criteria that we want to measure 100 milliamps. Okay, but we're only able to measure with the galvanometer 500 microamps so how can we make this two meet up what can we do okay this is how we set up the problem think of this so so okay by the way so this is uh, we said this is kind of the idea this is the setup okay we're going to reduce the effective resistance of our galvanometer those two together will be put into our circuit as our effective ammeter okay so here's our ammeter setup we have the galvanometer out here, G it has some resistance RG, and we have the we have something else. We have another resistor here, and I think in the lab manual it was RD, which is um, which you will see is not actually uh, gonna work. But anyways, we have here RD. We want there to be able to uh, we want 100 milliamps to be able to come in. Okay, so we want to be able to measure 100 milliamps. And we want at most 500 microamps running through here. Okay. And then through here has to be, by KCL, the rest of it has to go through here. So there are many ways that you could approach this. Okay. For me, the way I like to think of it um, is I'll do this. Okay. There's, now look, I said this is just the way I do it. There are many ways you can think about this. Okay. But there is something called current division. Okay, so there's something called current division, current division, and there's also the idea of admittance. Okay, so uh, both these ideas here, uh, these are this, these are not in your lab manual, uh, but you don't need these. You could have used other things. You can use KVL or KCL to solve this problem. If you know, you're, if you know this is 15 ohms and 500 microamps is running through it, 100 milliamps coming in, the rest has to go through here. You can use KCL or KVL or Ohm's law to solve this problem. Okay, there are many ways that you can solve this problem. For example, a quick way to solve it is I know from earlier that the full scale voltage was 0 0.06 oh my, 0 0.061 volts. So the rest of this 100 minus 500 microamps is running through here. Easy now, RD equals 100 milliamps sorry, the other way around, is equal to 0 0.061 volts over 100 milliamps minus 500 microamps. Okay, and that will give you the needed resistance RD. Okay, and there you go, that solves this problem. Okay, um, what I, the way I, I would solve it is I use this idea of current division and admittance. If anybody is wondering, I can explain to them this further, but this is how you could do it. See, this was just an application of Ohm's law and KVL, and that's it, and KCL as well. So this is using last week's labs, okay? But in any case, uh, this is this is the solution. So you use this, you're good to go. All right.